Salutations, everyone, and welcome to Failing Better, the greatest podcast in the world. Are you a loser? This podcast will help. I am Sean McLaughlin. I am Johnny Pallum. And together, we still are Failing, failing Better. better. Oh, nice baritone in your voice there, Johnny. Thank you. I've been practicing <laughs> two hours a day, every day, just saying the word failing better in a mirror. How are you, Johnny? Big, big week since our last episode. Lots of stuff's happened, both with, very- within the podcast and within the wider world. It certainly has. It's, and also, it's very hot. Lots of big social, political stuff. Lots of stuff in our personal lives. Pretty hot as well. Yeah, and also it's, it's red hot. Um, I guess we'll talk about the Patreon in a bit, but I just want to start things off by thanking everyone who signed up to the Patreon so far. We launched it last week. Frankly expected no one to sign up, and a few people really have. So already we've got a good thing going. And there's some people from abroad. Unbelievable that anyone's listening to this in general, yeah. but particularly abroad somehow. We have a couple of American Patreons, and we yeah. just want to extend a, a firm howdy partner <laughs> to all of our <laughs> to all of our US chums. Um, Johnny, what you what you've been up to then? What are you what have you been up to? I uh, I went to the cricket yesterday, England versus India. This will be good for the American listeners. <laughs> Do you want to explain that in American terms? It is like baseball, but with Indian people. <laughs> Fair how enough. You, how would you describe cricket? That's American? exactly how I would describe it. Yeah. Indian baseball. <laughs> Indian baseball. <laughs> and it was England versus India. So, yeah. you know, the, the colonised versus the colonisers. And, mm. um, and first thing we made a mistake was, so we all bought children's tickets. There were three of us. Um, we'd all bought children's tickets. And how uh, were you with children? No, no, no. There was three adults. Okay, um, yeah. Mid-30s, yep. all of us. Mm-hmm. Because it was, it was, and this can't be stressed enough, quite a lot cheaper. So. I actually did this exact thing when I went to cricket in, when I was a, a student. We always bought teenage, we always Because they never tickets. check. They never check. Yeah, even when you're carrying in literally a crate of beer with you, <laughs> yeah, they go, well, oh, those 11-year-olds are hitting it pretty hard. <laughs> So and we got in. I was ner- you. You are nervous for that's the that's the price you pay for your cheap tickets. Is you? I was nervous queuing up, mm. and got through. Felt so good. What I've realised is fi- stealing feels great. Mm. Like that that rush you get of like beating a system <laughs> is incredible. How how old was? What's the cutoff for children at this? Is it sixteen? Yeah. So you had you had. So I was. If someone asked me, I was gonna I was gonna argue long and hard that I was fifteen years old. <laughs> So what, your date of birth was 2007? Yeah, and I couldn't have done the maths that quickly. So I'm trying to just say it. But no, my actual excuse was that I'd bought it on v- like a, a website like Viagogo and they'd not told me it was a kid's ticket. Sure, that, sure, sure. That was what I was going to... I had it all plotted out. And we get there, we are surrounded by children. <laughs> <laughs> Like, like we're the, the family paddock. We, we are literally in the family paddock. There is um, a man, not a child, in a Mickey Mouse uh, top. There's a child in, like, um, <laughs> a Marvel thing. Then there's three middle-aged 30-year-olds, and then just loads more kids. <laughs> it's like... And one of our friends got there an hour early, so one friend was just sat there alone for an hour amongst all these children, feeling oh, dear. like a terrible human. And so we, it was actually fine though. It was a bit weird. It was quite creepy. It made me think next time I will not buy a children's ticket or buy an adult ticket. But we were right by the Indian players, like the pavilion where the Indian players are um, come. Yeah. Virat Kohli. Do you reckon Tendi was there, by the way? Do you reckon Sakin Tendulkar was there? I don't know. I, fan? I saw Dravid, who's another cricketer. I didn't see Tendi, but did see Kohli, who's like the new Tendi. Yeah, yeah. Do you know anything about cricket? Not uh, anymore. I used to follow it more than that. Coley's yeah. like the new Tendulkar. He's like a god. He's like one of the best players in the history of the game. You yeah, know, he's yeah, got yeah. a population of a billion people. So he's... Uh, they were fielding first. So he runs off the, like, uh, pitch to do something. Craig, my friend, shouts at him, uh, Coley, you're not very good at cricket. <laughs> and Coley, like, flips out. 
Like, no. I swear, to, I swear to God. Cody, like, turns around and looks at him, like, properly daggers, and then eventually, like, goes off. And then <laughs> that, that eight-year-old has got some serious defects. <laughs> so maybe I should leave this one. <laughs> well, then Cody comes back down, and then Craig said, oh, did you get your ego massaged? Because he'd been up there for a while. Cody, like, legit, calls him over says come over I, I, I swear to god this is real he starts like backing him up like come on then then Coley tells a steward about him so like the steward goes up and then Coley goes on the pitch and starts telling other Indian players about that him that is absolutely brilliant I, I swear to god it was nuts like this is this is like Messi or Ronaldo and yeah. Craig's like a maths teacher he's the mild mannered maths teacher <laughs> and and like um like Coley's on the pitch talking to the other Indian player and starts doing like you know that um, sign for bull crap. He starts yeah. doing that in our direction. <laughs> and like, and you like, got on his head though. You got on his head. We rattled him and you then got on his head. Um, we were, um, all the Indian fans were really support because we were, in India. There's a lot of Indian people in England, obviously. So it was like probably 50 50 the crowd between England. So there was loads of Indian supporters around us. Then they were all on our side. And then, so one of us gave him, gave Craig an Indian flag to like hold up, uh, and then it turned out that Craig held it up upside down. <laughs> so it, so it looked like he was like really having a go at the Indian nation. So basically, fr- from the outside, it looks like a sort of. <laughs> st- you remember you know that film Jack? Do you remember that film Jack with Robin Williams? It's about a little kid who has a condition that makes him look like a forty-year-old man. <laughs> yeah. To the outside world, it looked like a sort of child with that condition has inadvertently started a race riot at this cricket game. And it felt... Because if Coley had, like, tweeted anything or anything, like, it would have been over for all three of us. Because like, he's, like... He's got a multi-million followers. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, well, I mean... Did you shout failing better at him? Did you shout, uh, join the Patreon if you want to find out our version of events? Honestly, Craig, I can't tell you, uh, Craig, uh, Sean, I can't tell you Craig. how scared I was. <laughs> like, you know what, you know when like, someone, something's happening around you and yeah. you just can't really understand why Virat Kohli's sort of staring in your direction really pissed off? I think like, that's I, so brilliant, Johnny. It was so, it was so bizarre. I actually, I, I took myself for a week <laughs> just to, and just thought, this is like... This is a moment I'll remember for the rest of my life. Like, Virat Kohli is furious at one of my friends. <laughs> and, like, like genuinely, I, I, like, Virat kept it going for, like, an hour or two. Like, every time we took a wicket, he'd, like, look in our direction and start, like, pointing with his eye. It was like, what are you doing? You're perfe- Like, someone must have said worse to him than going for an ego massage. Especially, pl- like, does he... I assume he plays in the Indian Premier League, does he? Yeah, does yeah. He, like, the, I mean, over there, I imagine they get such shit from the crowd. But I wonder if he's such a god that no one actually ever says anything that isn't positive to him. Mm. Mm. But he was so hearing, hearing a maths teacher shout, you are bad at cricket. <laughs> well, that, that was... <laughs> it is, it's also so on the nose that there's sort of no way... <laughs> well, we there's, there's no misinterpretation there. No, no, but you're thinking... I mean, you're thinking I have enough self-confidence to go, that guy's wrong. You know you've got you've got. You know, I'm, I'm the most famous. I'm the most famous <laughs> cricketer in the biggest cricket nation on earth. Surely I'm not bad at cricket. Yeah, it must be okay at cricket. <laughs> it's like if someone shouted at us, "You are bad at hosting the podcast, failing better." I'd be like, "Well, I'm obviously not." I'm, yeah, we got seven pages. <laughs> <laughs> we do have more than seven. God bless. Um, but it is. It was. Uh, it was really bizarre. The sad thing is, nothing. Because we then we built it up all day, and then when he came out to bat, we were like, "Craig, say something, say something." Craig went over to yell at him. I don't know what he's going to yell. But then there was. So there were so many Indians cheering that we he got drowned out. So there was no like. It was all when he was fielding that it, the issue arose, and then when he was batting it. it Have died you ever down. been shouted at by a cricketer before? I don't think so. No. Because I have been. Have you? Yeah. When? <laughs> when? I was a kid. I, well, I went to, the, I went to, I used to go to cricket a lot with my dad, and uh, well, you know, in and out. Uh, and I was once sort of walking around behind the eye line of the on oh, a furious of the bo- if you bowler, that. which you're not meant to do. But I didn't know that, so I was yeah. just sort of walking around, <laughs> and then the guy batting turned around <laughs> in front of the whole stadium. Went, come on, mate, stop doing that. In front of the whole stadium. And I went, oh, sorry. And my dad went, yeah, that's Mike Atherton. <laughs> <laughs> Who at the time was the England captain. 
Yeah, yeah, like yeah. one of the most famous players in the country. Well, that again, I don't. I mean, if we've sort of been led there naturally. It's the problem with your height, isn't it? If you go to a cricket game, you're going to change the conditions on the pitch, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. Suddenly it's overcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like rain stops play. Also, a tall person has come to the stadium. Yeah. So it's affecting the, yeah, the, the view of the boundaries. Get, get the floodlights on. <laughs> He's back. For, for, because of the equality and disability, we can't kick him out, but we do have to change the whole game. That's why England struggled so much at the Ashes for years, because unfortunately they, their fatal flaw was discovered by, by me accidentally, which was if you put one tall person in the crowd, they literally come, fall to pieces. They fall to pieces. Johnny, that's a very exciting story. Now, I, I also assume that you were drinking many a pint, because that's sort of, whenever I go to cricket as an that's adult... That's the whole point. The whole point is you just sit there and get drunk. So yeah. you'll sit there in the middle of a children's enclosure, drinking <laughs> pints, hurling abuse at the Indian team. I mean, how did that feel? Did you feel like you were a big man at that point? Um, yeah, I did, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck God, I'm really drunk. I've annoyed the Indian captain, and I could probably beat most of the people up in this stand, actually. Yeah, that's that's a good thing. So I felt like a real lad, actually. I felt great. I felt really strong. How how the, the, It's funny, isn't it, when you go to cricket? Because it's sort of, it, it paints itself as a very dignified sport, but actually, I think the cricket fans are just as feral in many ways. If, more, not, if not more so, because you just get, like, yeah, you just get hammered. By the end, you just sort of... You know, you're barely watching the cricket, really. The cricket's very much a side... I mean, it was definitely less rowdy in the children's zone than it was <laughs> in the party stand. I've never been yeah. to... Wasn't there, was a, there wasn't as much gack going around, yeah, I assume. there was a lot of sandwiches being sort of withdrawn from lunch boxes. <laughs> <laughs> what was in the sandwich? Maybe contraband. Yeah. I read an article know. saying that there's such... That, that cocaine usage in cricket... Uh, in cricket? And that's in cricket crowds... Me. Yeah, yeah. It's now so rife that the that the EI is it the EICB don't know what to do about it. ECB. ECB. But um, that surprised me because it doesn't feel like a very cokey because you just sort of you're still fundamentally just sat there watching. It's a bit like when people do coke at uh, um, at stand up. Yeah, yeah. And you yeah. sort of think, why? What? This isn't the right form for that drug. Yeah, I don't. I'll never get that. I'll never get that because you just want to talk and socialize. You don't want to sit there and listen to. You know, a sad man tell you about their life. You may as well do cocaine when you go into the post office. Like <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, at least in the post office, you could chat to the, you know, the postmaster. Yeah, you could really <laughs> chat to them. Yeah. And, and also, if they're giving you shit, you could just nut, nut one out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, Johnny, sounds like you've had a hell of a week. Hell of was, a week. Did England, so um, did England England win? lost. Oh, fuck. It's because you lit a fire. But you, Coley got out. Coley got out for relatively few runs. Oh, that's so we were ready again. Um, and then when when Coley went out to back, Craig yelled at him, uh, "See you in ten minutes." But no one. Heard. Whoa! Yeah, that's. I mean, he sounds pretty hardcore. This friend of yours. He's pretty. He's not just a maths teacher. He's also <laughs> a linguistic genius. This is not. This is not your daddy's maths teacher. <laughs> It'd be funny if, um, like a. A governor was listening to this and fired Craig. A governor, <laughs> a governor of a school. <laughs> do you think any? Do you think there's anyone? Do you think there's any governors of schools listening to this? Well, we were. Uh, do you remember when? Because you got insulted by a human rights lawyer. Was that the last episode or the episode before? <laughs> I think that was the episode before. <laughs> that was we asked. Day. We asked people to write in with their jobs, and we got sent a couple of really good jobs that people have. Someone was an intelligence analyst, weren't they? Yeah. Which so, sounds like um, a made-up job. Well, they're all, all jobs are made up. Hello, fight the system. Yeah, Rage Against the Machine. <laughs> please subscribe to our Patreon. Yeah. Uh, please help have us you... Rage Against the Machine by subscribing to our Patreon. Have you seen loads of right-wing people who are furious of Rage Against the Machine because they've just realised that they're quite left-wing? Yeah, I have seen that. I mean, That's it's, funny, isn't it? It is funny. <laughs> I, I, I don't think that Rage Against the Machine could be more overtly exactly. anti-right-wing. I mean, it's, like, it's like ridiculous, <laughs> I think it's because fuck you, I won't do what you tell me. It's not the rallying cry of the sort of people who don't want to get um, whatever that, they're called. It's that thing about certain bands. I always thought Green Day were really good at that. <laughs> I thought Green Day were really cool. I think Green Day was really cool, actually. <laughs> I did. When I was like, I was like, Green Day really saying a lot of important things about the political system. <laughs> but I suppose the thing with Green Day is it's it's so non-specific mm, that you can true. sort of fit it into whatever you want. Rage Against the Machine, I'd say inherently aren't that non-specific. 
No, they're quite like, out there, like, aren't they? Killing, like... killing in the name is about racism in the police force. Yeah. But um, I suppose that main bit, fuck you, I don't do what you tell me. You could, I mean, you, you could say that gacked off your tits in the post office and it would make sense. That's where, that's where I do say that's my That's my motto, really, fuck you, I don't do what you tell me. <laughs> to anyone. Anyone. I'm going like... to buy two second class stamps instead of a first. <laughs> fuck you, I won't do what you tell me. <laughs> Yeah, loads of mild sort of things. I scream that at people whenever they get in my way. Do you ever play cricket, Johnny? I used to play. It was quite good. Uh, then suddenly my form deteriorated. Couldn't work out why. I spent quite a lot of time working on my technique. Mm. Uh, turned out I needed glasses. Couldn't see the ball. It's an issue, isn't it? Because you also you were a bowler, so you were just throwing, <laughs> <laughs> just, just throwing grass at them. Did you ever play cricket? I played a bit in school. Like I was, I always really. I think it's a really fun game to play. I think I it's like much cricket. funner to play than to watch. I think the problem with cricket is that when you like when you start doing like long full day games, it's just quite boring fielding. Mm. I always, I, I just get bored. I lived with a guy in my early twenties who was in a cricket, played for a cricket team. Not. It's so know. intense because it's like every every weekend's taken it with it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But it, once they said, "Oh, we're down a player. Do you want to come?" and play yeah and I was like yeah I'll come and play and like I'm I'm not joking I like I'm not joking I, I honestly would say that I had the worst the probably the worst day of sporting <laughs> the worst the worst attempt at any sport anyone has ever had I was bowled out for a golden duck right <laughs> by genuinely a nine year old boy <laughs> Which, for the Americans listening, is basically basically means I had the bat and a infant <laughs> got me out. First ball. First ball. Um, my friend then said that watching me try to hold a cricket bat and utilise it was like watching a daddy long legs try to pick up a match. <laughs> well, how would you dip? Because if you were quite good at school, was it just the standard dead high? Well, at school you. they didn't even do over our, over our bowling in PE. Oh, they did at my school. I went to I went to like a mainly Asian school, so I think cricket was quite high up yeah. on the. I was quite good at cricket though. Oh well, that's good. Um, what about you? Have you had anything this week? Yeah, went to a film last night. Oh, what film? Elvis. Oh, and what's that about then? <laughs> very good. Is it good? Very. No, what you said was very good. Oh, thank you. Was the film is also film? the film I also really really enjoyed. Um, did ruin it somewhat. Um, did a fart <laughs> that was much louder than I could have anticipated. How loud are we talking? Did people... Well, let's put it this way. Uh, it was during a, one of the rare moments of silence in the film. <laughs> Why was it silent? Because Martin Luther King had just been shot. <laughs> so... God, what a big... We've really come after a lot of sort of important just... people this week. <laughs> I was with my wife and she looked at me and she went, what the fuck? I went, I'm, honestly, I had no idea. Mark, you're watching it. Martin Luther King gets shot. Then there's a moment of silence. And then... <laughs> <laughs> so embarrassed. Fucking hell. Did, did other, was it like, how audible are we talking? Like, were other people in there? Everyone knew. <laughs> Everyone knew. Did you start blaming your wife? Or did you well, just look, take it on the chin? But then maybe they didn't know. Maybe they, you know, blame me, my wife. What, what, That's like what I very, do. It's a very, very performative way of just going, honey, ooh la la. Stinky. No more broccoli for you before cinema trips. <laughs> Fucking hell. No, what happened was, um, well, look, maybe, look, it's a very, the soundscapes within it are very. <laughs> you think, you think someone thought. Well, maybe they thought. We enjoyed by the talking. sound editor. Well, <laughs> interesting choice. So far, it's just been a sort of like kaleidoscopic soundscape of different uh, Elvis songs and blues songs. It's weird that during Martin Luther King's assassination scene they've included a singular fart. <laughs> um, God, I, I like to think that. that's what they did think. Someone left there thinking weird choice. Weird choice. Very very <laughs> moving moment as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also it really showed the, the, the common humanity we all share with that little fart reminding us that we are animals. You know, that's what I like to think. Yeah, maybe he's making a point about the commodification of uh, of black oh. American music. Yeah, and they, go, they had and nothing, celebrity. and in the end, it just became another fart in the Western consumerist culture. 
I'd love it if someone had reviewed it and, and that exists. Your fart has dominated their review of the, the whole show. I had my doubts about Baz Luhrmann's vision of <laughs> Elvis's life, and then I came to the fart scene. Yeah, I came to very... How did they make it so stinky? I'll never <laughs> know. The vision <laughs> is back. <laughs> Uh, and to really... then include the sound of a wife saying to presumably someone's <laughs> husband, what the fuck are you doing? Stop farting. <laughs> That's so pathetic. Very Tom. sort of Art Nouveau. <laughs> it's not pathetic. People need to fart, right? Your it's... wife turning to say, for fuck's sake, please stop farting. She was farting during it as well. We were both oh, farting, yeah. <laughs> What's wrong with <laughs> Because we'd eaten, we'd eaten kidney bean, black bean and spinach burgers directly before we went in. So we were, but we were farting up a hell of a storm. Because also, when you get excited, you fart, and that film is exciting. Like Elvis's music is. Can I just rewind and say I don't think that's true? When you get excited, you fart. I don't think that's biologically true. Listeners, we need you to email in because I presumably you're filled to the brim with excitement at listening to this. <laughs> how much you farted? Be honest. Be honest. Did you? Um, how close was the nearest person to you? Like, was it a full cinema? Or was it an empty? Cinema? No, no, no. It wasn't a full cinema. We we go to the cinema near us. We have a very we have like passes. We pay for passes. So you can go to as many it's films so as you want. So cute. And do you think you're not as a stinky couple? Do you think it's like, <laughs> like the stinky couple are here? <laughs> Don't look Uh-oh. them in the eye. Give them the their far- tickets. The farters are here. <laughs> Off to see Minions two again. <laughs> no, it's um, it's never full. And I don't know how good. it's still a business. It's not where it's going. There's a really nice cinema that we go to sometimes that's never full. Maybe cinema's dying because people want is. living room space where people can't fart. <laughs> I want to be able to fart in peace in my home. Just for one goddamn day. I'm, I'm not going to, to go to the cinema again. and hold in all of my farts. I get so <laughs> excited by the moving pictures. <laughs> good. Well, that's very good. Uh, yeah, it's good, isn't it? An old Elvis. Bloody hell. <sighs> what a life. Didn't he die shitting himself to he death on the die. toilet? <laughs> He did die on the toilet. They didn't, so show, maybe that, they maybe didn't was, show that bit in it. Maybe um, it was a bit of a, you know... <laughs> yeah, premonition. Yeah, yeah. you were trying to sort of, you know, what, sort of honour him with your little toot. Soon as Elvis farted that day, I knew he'd die on the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> it is a weird film because it's, a much, it's as much about his manager as it is about him. Do you know much about Elvis? Almost nothing really. I, I'm not like I, I would listen to his music, but I'd never like li- like I know of a few songs, but I I just I don't really, did he? Yeah, I don't know anything. His manager, his manager was just an unbelievable piece of work. Really? Who, who, fu- who yeah fucked him over totally? It was and he's played by Tom Hanks in it, but sort of playing. He's almost like he's from a different film. Yeah, yeah. Um, How so? We just got this weird voice. Was like, hey, no. <laughs> he's not even like that. He's like. <laughs> He's like, tell me, Elvis, do you... Because he was from Holland, the guy. <laughs> tell me, Elvis, do you want to go all the way? You want a rocket ship? Do you want to smoke a pancake? <laughs> you want to... Let's smoke spliffs, Elvis. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Schiphol International Airport. Good why, don't, why don't we get John to do comedy there? They'll hate him so much. One of his worst deaths ever. Have you, well, have you done comedy in Amsterdam? I did comedy. There's like that. Is there someone called like the Utrecht Comedy Festival or something? Yeah, yeah, I've done that. Beautiful right, city. First gig went so well. <laughs> um, like genuinely, because people there's a like reputation the Dutch people have been quite hard to do comedy to. First, I was doing new material. You know, halfway through, you're like, I can just gonna pull out the new stuff because these mm. people love me. Second gig, definitely silence. Mm. Then there were mm. two. A third and a fourth gig, which very much followed the second gig's lead. Sorry to hear that. I learned a lot in Holland. I've done so much in Holland. I've actually got a bit of a fan base over there. I'd do say. you? Yeah. What do you think? Oh. Any of them, if you listen to it, any of my please? Dutch fans listening to me, I just want to say I think you're all nicer than that bloody Colonel Tom Parker. Boy, he exploited that Elvis Presley. Um, yeah, maybe we'll do a live show in Rotterdam. I'd like that. Isn't is what? Where's the? Uh, can we do it in Amsterdam, please? Why? I don't know. I just like I know Amsterdam. And I like the little canals. It is nice, Amsterdam. I think uh, Utrecht's very nice as well. Utrecht. Well, my sister um, uh, lived there for a year or two, so I've been to Utrecht too many times. 
Not too many times, but if I was going to go back... Too many times. I wouldn't Fuck go back Utrecht. again. Very yeah, nice. Utrecht. They, it's all beautiful, isn't it? They just have bikes and cycling. There's probably crime and stuff. i tell you what happened in Utrecht. I almost got mugged by someone, but in English. I thought, this is a level of, like... He was, like... He started... I was just walking down and, and getting back to my sister's house. Not, like, not like 10 p.m., maybe. And someone said to me in Dutch. I didn't know what they were saying. And then in English they went, give me your money. And I thought, this is bilingual. <laughs> Fucking hell, this guy's great. <laughs> There's no Did way. You say that to him? Yeah, yeah, There's just no way that an English mugger would be as flipped to Dutch if needed. No, no, no. So I was very impressed. But then another person came and I didn't ask. It was quite a weird. The whole incident was quite weird. But I ended up not giving him money. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. Well, then all, all's well that ends well. All well that ends well. And last, I did speak- the last two times I've been to the Netherlands, and we'll, we'll move on after this, I've done a gig, and during my gig, the government has announced a full national lockdown. Wow, that's impressive. So, so that's my way of viewing them, is them saying, oh, almost stopped him again. <laughs> you think they're just slightly too late every time? They, they, they want to get rid of me, but they or just... Or do you they, think they're, they're like, we have, to, we have to get Sean... Like, we need... Sean's comedy so good that we, we want to lock down today, but we'll wait till tomorrow so that the audience get to see yeah, Sean. Yeah, that, that could do it. That could do it. Yeah, maybe you're... You, yeah, I think it's that one. I think you're, you're a beacon of light to the Dutch people, so they want to bring you there to make the, the crowd roar with laughter before shutting down everything. Let me be the bong that lights the way, Holland. <laughs> the red light, if you will, in the dark... And Van Gogh is also Dutch. <laughs> um, God, please sign up to the Patreon. Please give us a five-star review. And please keep on failing better. <laughs> oh, Johnny. I think we're on good form. Um, yes, let's make sure the Patreon right now. Thank you so much for everyone who signed up. Uh, we hope you're enjoying all of the facilities. We're going to start signing in more this week and send some little messages to all our Patreons. Very surprised by the amount of people. We don't want to say how many, but um, it's, uh, it's we're very, very happy. And Can I ask a question, Sean? Aren't we doing a shout-out later on with all their names? We are going to do a shout-out later on with all their names. So will people not be able to work out how many are there by just adding the names up? Yeah, but I'm one of the names. <laughs> yeah, Sean signed up. Sean, Sean signed up to our Patreon. Because <laughs> I think he was anxious no one signed up. So we, we had I like was an email. Te- I was the test. No, I was, we did it. We, we had an email works. notification and it popped up that Sean McLaughlin signed up. <laughs> I have actually. And if you want to keep my patronage, you're going to have to actually improve the level That's of content. That's true, actually. God, I need to be kind to you because you're, you're part of the. You're part of the Patreon community now. I'm part of both the problem and solution. Yeah. Is there anything you'd like to see your podcast do better, Sean, as a Patreon? Um, you're not a host now, you're Patreon. I don't know. Topless. Topless picks. Topless picks. Topless picks. Would you like picks. that if you want to see us uh, be topless? Well, we're not doing that. Are uh, we not? I, I, I cannot see how my topless body would do anything but deter Patreons. I don't know. You've got a pretty hot bod. <laughs> it's quite hot, actually. Yeah, you're sort yeah, of skinny. You got so, like a, you got quite sort of sinewy muscle. I think you'd be someone. To, you'd be lovely for someone to look at. Someone, not you. Yeah, so, not me. Obviously. There must be one person in the world who likes looking at it. Do you think how much of uh, your? I, relationship- can I just say, <laughs> yeah. wherever this is going, I think we need to draw a line now. Do you think this is the question? But you can you can claim the fifth if you want. Do you think Alexa finds you attractive? Do you think Alexa enjoys your body <laughs> or your you, personality it- more? Well, like if wife, you, that is. Yeah, 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 Sean's wife. Do you think if you had 10% less personality, you'd still be married to Alexa? I don't, I'm not even saying this to be funny. I don't know if she enjoys either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel the same, actually. It's nuts how... Um... Yeah, I've been going out with Sophie for six years now. And, uh, or maybe not six years, five years. I don't know, some amount of years. I should probably know, but I just don't. <laughs> sure as shit ain't your personality, then, is it? Your looks have got to, <laughs> have got to pick up the slacks. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm very bad at things like that, for sure. But, like, now, it is that, it's quite hack comedy, but when, like, she does something wrong, there's a bit of it that's like, yes, this will come in handy in two weeks' time when we're having a mini argument. And that's, that's not ideal, is it? <laughs> 
You told that human rights lawyer that failing better was bad. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but you burnt the house down. <laughs> well, apples and pears. Um, I think my wife likes... Uh, <laughs> I was going to say you. I think, I think my she wife likes, likes me. me. I think she likes me. She loves you, Sean. It's very sweet. She I don't do. see it. I don't see what she sees in you. But whatever she does is fucking... Sophie lo- well, Sophie loves you as well, and I don't see that. <laughs> I, I don't mean, either. What? I think we're both in relationships that are way above our pay grade, <laughs> and it is, a ma- it is only a matter of time before we're both alone in the scrap heap. I mean, we're definitely... I think we're destined to become bad housemates. I think that's our destiny. Yeah, yeah. I keep thinking, if I book up with Sophie now, I'd have to go and move to London probably to gig a lot and move into a house share, and I'd be, I'd be a mess. Imagine Just, if me and you, imagine me and you in <laughs> that's three the years on the scrap heap. This is the sitcom. We both have our lives sorted. Failing both, better towers. Failing better towers. <laughs> Me. You just walk into my room like that, meeting a block of cheese again. <laughs> Johnny, you've left, your, to you've left your so condoms in. You've left your condom in the toaster. <laughs> what was I even thinking putting it in there? You can't make a toast bun. <laughs> I was just sniffing so much glue last night. <laughs> this is the sort of dialogue that's going to take us to the top. The new office. <laughs> Can't, can't get can't get a toaster pregnant. <laughs> Prove us wrong, listeners. Prove us wrong. Uh, anyway, uh, patreon.com <laughs> slash failing better. If you want to pay for more of this shit. And uh, also, if you don't want to do that, get, do, do subscribe. Do give us a nice rating or review on Apple or Spotify. Um, Here's something you could do for us, actually, if you fancy. We've... Um, I can't work out if we get um, downloads if you just stream it on our analytics. So if you have a bit of spare time, fancy just downloading all of our episodes to see if we get a massive pump, that'd be great. Just more more because I'm interested than... But it also would help us. Do you think that's a good thing to ask? Well, it's a good thing to ask. I mean, I certainly wouldn't say yes if I was one of the audience. Oh, yeah, sure. I'd love to download every single episode of this podcast that I've already listened to. to yeah, I see what you're saying. It's, there's little in it for them. But you would be helping at a failing product. Do you like products but fear they might go out of business? Mm. Well, then you can help us to fail I feel, better. I feel like that. I feel about that with a new. There's a new cookie stand at the top of my road. Oh really? I feel and like you... oh, they're going to go out of business, but they're really good. They're lovely, but it's very odd. I feel like it's a front or something. Why are they just selling cookies? It's basically three geezers have opened up a <laughs> cookie stand at the top of my road. <laughs> like, yeah, 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 yeah. It's all just cookies and stuff. Yeah, but they're like. <laughs> They're really nice. They sell cronuts. They sell croffles. I don't know what any of these things are. Cronuts are croissant donuts. Croffles, Ooh. croissant waffles. So basically, they're, they're, they're more croissants than cookies. And they sell lots of cookies. And how much? How much is a cookie? Like four pound a cookie. Three pound a cookie. You can only do that in London, I think. It's three pound, but it's but if you go at nine o'clock, they're all half price <laughs> <laughs> because they're about to close. <laughs> <laughs> that's fun you could only do that in London and to be honest I really begrudge paying it and then I ate it and I did sort of have to accept this This is this is a higher tier cookie than anything else I'm getting in the area that's, you, that's yeah that's I mean I would say that um, but lads if you're listening please, Maybe you should, I'd like us to get down. sponsorship if you want a sponsorship on we have a pretty big fucking platform actually we're massive in America it's us and McDonald's fighting for number one spot in the um, in the burger salad. <laughs> I've gone, I've gone. I think my head's usually, gone short. Usually, when people sort of don't know where the sentence is going, they're sort of able to sort of <laughs> they're able to just kind of. get... I think the heat's got to me, Sean. Here, you, I mean, you. The panic as soon as you say one word, the panic sets. The it. thing is, I never know where sentence I say is ending ever. Mm. And normally, I never that's... know where sentence I is saying ever. Is anything yeah. ever? Yeah. yeah, couldn't have couldn't have said it better. Yeah, to make my point, my articulate point, which is that I'm a dumb fuck. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you very much. Um, should we get into this episode, Johnny? Let's get into this goddamn episode. I can't just say, listeners, it's good to be back in your old lug holes. Whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs> Welcome back to Failing Better, the self-improvement comedy podcast with me and Sean, two friends who have decided to make a podcast. (laughs) Do you think that's a good description? I think that's a great description, and I think it's great to do that, what, half an hour into the episode? 
I, th- yeah. I, th- I think all podcasts every half hour should have to explain who they are and why they're doing this. I think so. A brief synopsis for people who've, who've not quite um, understood it yet. Hmm. It would help me. <laughs> it would help you, and he's doing it. <laughs> we go, oh, that's why I'm here. Oh, yeah. um, the day we're looking at how to become social media famous, Sean. Would you say that you're social media famous? Fuck. Sorry, my earphones just came out. Um, can you repeat the question? <laughs> <laughs> would you say that you're um, social media famous? I would say that my social media presence is up and down. Um, we mainly down, would you say? At the moment, I don't really go on it that much. I so never I go on I it. I certainly don't post on it. I find I've I found myself I think getting quite addicted to it, um, and I don't have any desire to be on it because I think it's quite. St- destructive in many ways but what do you think I realised when I was on tour I was suddenly like shit I should have been on social media for the last four years because a lot of my peers have like thousands of followers and I just have hardly any followers because I'm I've quite crap I've got a good amount of Twitter followers I guess an okay amount of it. it my Instagram should be bigger I need to that's the one to focus on I think my Twitter is it is, why yeah. do you think that I feel like that's the, the one that's I think Twitter is such a death death zone whereas uh I guess Twitter could, is a horrible space, isn't it? Well, it's just sort of alg- it's now so algorithm led mm. that, that it's sort of I think it can corrupt quite easily. Like I find myself getting corrupted by it. Really? What would yeah. you, you say the main way you've been corrupted by Twitter is? Uh, well, I now believe the Earth is flat. I um, could say that's just a bit of learning. The mainstream media don't want you to know. I hate the mainstream media. I call it the lame stream media. That's do you? That's really that's good. I hate that's it. really clever, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you should yeah. tweet that. I think that could go really well. Do you reckon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. La- lame stream media. Lame stream media. Do you get it? I get it. I get it. I it's really good, think that's it? really good. That's oh, really thanks, man. that's really good stuff, actually. Maybe I'd be. Maybe maybe I'll find a stream near me, like a sort of creek or something, that's not very good. I'd be like, this stream is so lame. It may as well be uh, bloody Sky News. <laughs> I love that too. I think like that's that really, yeah, really good, actually. Do you yeah, like that yeah. one? Do you like that I one? think you might be a Twitter sensation. And I don't yeah. throw away the word sensation around <laughs> lightly. I only say it when I'm eating the, those delicious crisps and when I'm hearing your Twitter ideas. <laughs> Walker sensations are very nice, aren't they? They're delicious, um, yeah. What sort of social media are you on then, Johnny? What are you, talk- what, what are you doing day to day? I'm on no. I always should be on some. Look, like, like I, I, I would like to be better. That's why I sort of did this because I think if I could crack social media, because Sean, let's be honest, everything in my life is failing. I've sort of, I've stopped doing stand up really, which is, let's be honest, baffling decision. Mm. I got the worst feedback I've ever got for a script, as I think I mentioned to you recently. It was yes, brutal, yes. absolutely yes. brutal. Use the word beige. You don't want to wear beige, do you? Uh, unless you were. Uh, a 50-year-old dad who shops at Marks and Spencers, which I will be one day if things go correctly. Uh, and I'm helping my girlfriend do a sitcom, which would be great. Can you just start planning some of your sentences? Just just maybe have a when few. Do you, plan, you can't plan your sentences, do you? I always have at least 10 pre-planned sentences <laughs> that I oh, can yeah. just dip into about various topics if I don't know what I'm doing. What's, like, give me one. Pre-planned the world, sentence. <laughs> the world is flat. Great. Give me another one. 9-11 was an inside job. You're also quite extreme, though. For small talk, these aren't great, I don't think. If you're okay. like, uh, I'll have a coffee, and then I, I, you know, there's that minute silence where you're sort of making the coffee if you just blow out 9-11 was an inside job. Stanley Kubrick directed the mood landing video. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um, no, but seriously, though, come on. Um, uh, yeah, you've got to be on the socials. The problem is... <laughs> You have to be on the socials, but in order to go on it as much as it would make a difference, you basically have to accept that you're going to go mad. I think that's it. That's and my I- problem. And the people I know who are really big on social media, like like that's how they've made their name predominantly. I, d- I do think it has corrupted them a bit. Yeah. Not and all I of th- them, but enough of them. I feel like I never, ever think, oh, that would be a funny tweet. Like, I'm, I'm just... I just- I'm never, or when I'm at like in the cricket, I'm never thinking oh, I should put this on Instagram. I'm just living, I'm just shouting at Will Coley. You know mm. what I mean? I'm, I'm not like, I'm not thinking this should be publicised. This is a personal battle between me and him and my friend Craig. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a personal matter uh, how I ended up arrested and 
yeah. <laughs> extradited to India. <laughs> I'm so, sort of good. I'm okay at that. Like I do, I do post a little thing. Like if something funny, if I, you posted the fart thing, I saw posted that fart thing. Yeah. When you posted the fart thing, I just thought, fucking hell, this is my partner in the podcast. No, you didn't think that. And then. It turned out it was because I thought it was one of your weird lies. You know, every time and then you do a tweet that's just like, made, like random. What's random? I don't do random tweets, do I? <laughs> All the time, where it's like, I don't know. I'll next time, next time you do a tweet that's a bit random, I'll like, this is what I was talking about. <laughs> Please buy tickets to my fridge show. <laughs> so <laughs> random. Yeah. What that's is all this I really guy do on? now. All I ever do is just sort of tweet promo stuff. That's all I do. But then you think no one's interested in this shit. But, sh- but luckily, Sean, we've got nine tips. So we're going to be famous on social media. That'd be good. The first one is be unique. I think we're both quite unique. I you're think you're taller very than the unique. shard. I'm, you know, I'm a lovely man. <laughs> All right. Well, I got two issues with what you just said there. <laughs> yeah. The main one is I disagree with that second one. That I'm a lovely man. Would you use a, a very, very lovely? Would you say? Well, how? Would... I would say I'm a very lovely man. Yeah, that does sound like some perfect. What's creature. my unique selling point? He's a very lovely man. He's a very lovely man in a very lovely world. Now, what would you say... How would you describe me? Three three words. A um, few of them should be positive. <laughs> three words. Wow, we... Um, like, Handsome? Handsome? I'd say... Uh, sturdy. <laughs> like a fridge. Ox-like. <laughs> sturdy ox-like. Those are the three words. <laughs> <laughs> and it's Johnny sturdy, sturdy ox like Pelham sturdy like ox sturdy like ox I am sturdy like ox how would you describe me in three words uh sexy smelly what um exuberant I don't think you know what those words mean well you, you're definitely smelly you farted when you farted when Martin Luther King died <laughs> I fought when any when any Major when any, when any king dies. dies. <laughs> it's my blessing and my curse. <laughs> Lizzie's dead. Oh, when Lizzie God. when Lizzie goes, my I think I have to fumigate my home. <laughs> is that a full that's a full <laughs> shit, isn't it? <laughs> oh no. It's followed through again. The great farter of do sign up to the Patreon, by the way, guys. We cannot stress enough how much you should. Please. I was so touched. Can I just say on a heart for more? When The fact that anyone would be willing to give us any money for this shit was really lovely. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, <laughs> Sean and his friends. Be, be, be unique. You do have to be unique. But the problem is I think a lot of social media actually rewards people that aren't unique. God, you've already talked about this before. Instagram, because it's like one style of joke and then you repeat it, isn't it? Yeah, I feel like it with with the, with TikTok, certainly with Twitter. I feel like the algorithm is so, and and also just re- it rewards people just stealing jokes. Like they're so yeah, and that's like true. brazenly stealing stuff. What is the algorithm? That's a fucking good question. Because everyone says all oh, the you've got to keep the algorithm happy, but I don't think I know what the algorithm is. I guess it's just what shows up on your screen, isn't it? Yeah. So it's like there's well, some sort of mathematical formula which determines what you see. I guess it's like if you did three tweets about cricket. Yeah. And then you, maybe you'd like to think about cricket. The algorithm would, would, would say... I'd think I was a cricket bat. This guy is a cricket bat. <laughs> so we're going to send him <laughs> tweets about polish <laughs> and varnish. But I think you're right, because everyone talks about how strong... Well, I think that's what it is, but I think some algorithms are better than others. Like, I do think the... Um, I think the Twitter one is absolutely awful. Because I, like... It, you, it's meant to be like, yeah, they've got all your data now. Like, Google, Twitter knows everything about you. And then you get, like, an advert for, like, erectile dysfunction. And you're like, mate, I couldn't be functioning any better. What are you talking about? <laughs> I think you've really... Um, I think you've revealed something about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like you do a few tweets, you do a few likes, they think they know who you are. Next next thing I know, I'm getting all these adverts for guide to escape the country with a moustache <laughs> disguise. How to escape your debts and problems. I actually have got quite a lot of debt ones recently, which does seem like they do have quite a good understanding of who I am. Mm, mm, mm. But, but are, you do get really random adverts of this supposedly amazing algorithm that you should think this doesn't link to me. Or like a, you know, a 50-year-old man trying to buy a shed. 
I don't mm. want to shand. <laughs> <laughs> What's the next one, Johnny? What's the next way we can be big on social media? It is be entertaining. We struggle with that, I think. Yeah, we're not. Gonna, that's not going to happen. We just have to move on from that one. The next, yeah. one's, the next so one's you even, have to pick your battles in this yeah. social media game. The next one's even, provide quality material. <sighs> I don't know how to do that. I don't know what that. Have you ever done anything you're proud of, Sean? <laughs> it's quite. But the thing is with that is people who <laughs> provide quality material. I'm not convinced that, that it's such a thing as quality material. It's like trickle down economics. I think it. I think it's. <laughs> It's built on the idea that anything can, that material can be good. I've yet to, I've yet to write any. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? It's like who determines what quality is? Because a lot of people think what I do is hack, pathetic, and appalling jokes that um, take a swipe at the most vulnerable in society. But I think it's quite funny. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. You know what? You're right. And I don't care what that review in The Guardian said. <laughs> you're punching down so hard that it's actually gone back around the world and you're punching up again. Yeah, I'm punching down. I just think, you know, I'm paying that tax. Well, not me specifically. Someone's paying that tax dollar money. And should they have? Should they be able to afford a, a TV? That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah that's all that's we're saying. That's all we're saying. That is, yeah. that is literally all we're saying. Um, <laughs> Maybe we should say something else. That is unfortunately all we're saying. <laughs> So, uh, provide quality material, that's tricky, I think. But what do they mean by that? What does it say? Does it, In do addition to a unique focus and an entertaining personality, the third major compo component is to be really good at what you do. <laughs> fuck. What the fuck, Johnny? What are you trying to... You, what? If there, you're may going well, to... there may as well be a guy to like, oh, build, uh, have a nuclear reactor in your room. Like, <laughs> we're not going to do this. If you're going to stream on YouTube or Twitch, invest in good audio and video equipment, learn how to edit videos and ensure proper lighting. We're 20 apps in and haven't done any of that. How's your lighting at the moment, by the way, Johnny? I couldn't be in a darker mood. On, on Patreon. <laughs> All the Patreon people with access to the video will now know that Johnny basically... <laughs> bloody hell. You it feels like I'm in a cellar. It, I, it couldn't be worse lighting. No, no, it really couldn't. Because all you can sort of see is the, the reflection of my glasses. It's yeah. Like, exactly. I, I look like a mole. I look like a mole with glasses on. <laughs> you look like a hacker from, like, a film in 1992. <laughs> <laughs> oh good, my dog started barking. Uh oh. Um alright, so so far we're not doing that well. I mean how many followers do we have? I'm gonna check how many followers I've got. I actually haven't got Instagram on my phone, that might be an issue. Oh, oh number four is have Instagram on your phone. No, it isn't. It's not no. <laughs> I've got thirteen and a half thousand followers on Twitter. I've got That's like one thousand. Right. That's pathetic. Look, if, you and a half thousand, follow, if you follow Sean, follow me. Don't. Follow I'm, me. I'm gonna unfollow you. Don't unfollow. What? I need all the flaws I can get. I, if you unfollow me, I'll unfollow you. I'm gonna look at your last tweet, Johnny. All right. <laughs> Do you mind if I look at your last tweet? Yeah, and tell me. I've got no idea what you it is. You've got two thousand followers now, Johnny. Thank you. Your pinned tweet is about your national tour, which I believe ended about six <laughs> months ago. <laughs> <laughs> so that's not a good start. Oh, your last tweet is a quote retweet of failing better. That's all I do now. All I do is just talk about failing better. My only thing that would be. Do you know what? You really, you really did promote it actually with flair and personality. So I, I can't really hold you. I can't Thank hold you. It. Yeah. Well, I mean, the way that you wrote this, so much personality. This week's episode is very funny. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, right? This week's episode is very funny. <laughs> You couldn't what? think of anything else to say. What I, what I initially wrote in this week's episode is funny. And then I thought, no, no, that's not enough. That is not enough. I need an extra word. <laughs> this week's episode is funny. Well, um, it has zero retweets and zero <laughs> likes. But that's why I struggle with this. People keep, like, we keep meaning to do, like, little videos to promote them. But then no one fucking listen, watches them anyway. Well, that's the, that's the other thing about algorithms. If you feed into it more... It re it rewards you more. So Is that true? It, it spreads it, it, it. If you're a regular user on social media, your stuff will be put in front of more eyeballs. It, That's it rewards by. Can I just say I like how when you're talking about social media analytics, you use the word eyeballs instead of humans. <laughs> You've got to get in front of more eyeballs. <laughs> well, that's it. that's how they view us, though, isn't it? We're just a pair of eyes and a pair of wallets <laughs> and a pair of balls <laughs> and a big old dog. <laughs> 
That's why they keep sending me erectile dysfunction stuff. That's how they viewed us. That's how they viewed me, mate. <laughs> That's how I view you, to be honest. Just a rich set of balls. <laughs> With eyes. When I draw you, I just draw glasses around the cock. <laughs> How often are you drawing me on a daily... Are you drawing me day to day? I say I, I draw... At the moment, going for a bit of a lull, probably 24 times a day. But in my head, eh, I was doing easy 200, 200 Tom McLaughlin's a day. I think we should do... This would be a great thing. Follow us on... We actually tweet a bit off the failing better twitter we actually we do. have it for a little while but we, we do we do put funny stuff up there follow us and we'll do drawings of each other how about that can i just say i got uh, i am the worst person at art in the world in year nine which is like 14 i got a level one for art which is um what a, what a nursery child should get <laughs> again I, sw- I swear to god that's true i cannot draw what's your picture of me gonna be then is it just be pasta stock yeah, i think it'll be a stick man but then who Pretty uses accurate. the whole of the who uses the whole of the page yeah, and then I'll draw accurate. a little I'll draw the shark next to you and it'll be smaller All what right. are your what are your picture of me be I'm actually a very good artist are you I want, the first thing I ever wanted to be was a uh, cartoonist so I used to really? draw a lot when I was a kid yeah I wasn't that good I, I used to be oh, okay but then some you meet some people who are just so good at drawing I was never that good I the thing, the thing about drawing is it's one of those things where everyone says oh I can't draw I can't draw and then that's someone who really can't fucking draw I'd find it frustrating. Like, I'm so shit, and they just no. I, f- I find that hard whenever I talk to people. Go, yeah, I can't host a podcast. I can't host. A-. I'm like, I genuinely can't host a podcast. Yeah. I mean, I can't say. Sense- I think t- f- the fact that I'm willing to have willing and have done 21 episodes of a podcast to say that I literally can't speak in sentences <laughs> is remarkable. Yeah, this is a. We should get a Pride of Britain for this. We should get a fucking. We should get some funding from someone. Yeah, there's, there should be some sort of arts council funding for underprivileged people. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I cannot use words correctly. And I'm, I'm, I've we're chosen a doing, w- I'm doing a podcast with a man who's not only boring, he can't even express himself. Yeah. Like, what, what are we doing? We're we need, paying, more, we need we're, funding. We're paying off our own back for this shit. Yeah, we should be sucking the state dry. <laughs> this is the sort of thing they want, they want, isn't it, in the woke Jeremy Corbyn's world? <laughs> it's not about quality anymore, it's about box ticking. And fuck me, do I tick a lot of boxes. <laughs> um, right, what's the next ticket? Go follow us on Failing Pod, by the way, on Twitter. Follow us on Failing Pod. The next one is Focus on Followers, which you've just done. Yes! Follow once, us! And, and if you don't follow us, follow us again. It says once you have your channel or page, focus on getting as many followers as you can. Contact everyone you know and ask them to follow you and share your information with others. We should do that. Contact, I'm not contacting everyone. I'm not contacting my cousin. Go, hey, can you follow us on Failing Pod? Contact your cousin. Big old, hey. sh- big old Andy McLaughlin. Get Andy McLaughlin down. <laughs> Andy, do you think do you think your cousin would like this stuff if he if he ever stumbled across it? Look, all I'm going to say is my brother-in-law was staying with us for the last week from Canada. And he very tepidly mentioned about four days into the trip, I have listened to your podcast. It's pretty, pretty loose. <laughs> I was like, yeah. Did he say that? Yeah. <laughs> the thing about me, and it is, it doesn't you say, have... It, I was like, it's really hard to have a podcast. He goes, yeah, you can, you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is challenging. We, I've got a lot of negative feedback about this podcast. And I think there is a, every week, and this is true, me and Sean have a chat about how we should end the podcast. And a lot of it is because, like that, like, you do just bump into people and go off things like, yeah, listen to the podcast, sort of, um, yeah, 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 yeah. And, the, and the, it's very rare you get positive feedback, I'd say. Well, I just, I just wouldn't mention that I'd listen to it if I didn't have something nice to say. But then that's, I- even, that's even more worrying, Sean. No. How, many, how many people are not mentioning it? Because I wouldn't mention it. So there's loads of people who are just secretly... Because we were quite sort of well-reputable comics. Mm. And now we're just the fuck knuckles who do the shit show. Yeah, we're absolutely, we're absolutely blowing holes in our own boat on a weekly basis. We are, because people before would have probably thought, John, God, quite sort of quite a sort of theatrical show. He's done Apollo, he's sort of up in the world. Oh, listen to his podcast, see what he's actually like. Oh, he's, a, he's an absolute fuck knuckle who can't speak straight. He's got the queen of paedophile and he's offended Raul Coley. <laughs> Isn't Raul Coley a comedian? <laughs> yes, he yeah, hasn't been like 
<laughs> well, you, you said that earlier, and I didn't know if they had the same name. But is it Raul Curley's a comedian? <laughs> Are you uh, so? What's the name of the Coley that you? Virat Coley. There's two Coley. There's Virat Coley, who's the greatest Indian cricket of all time, and there's Raul Coley, who's a comedian from the northeast of England. <laughs> This can't work. Fuck me. We'll be having a crisis chat now after this. <laughs> yeah, d- yeah, trust me. Our Patreons, our Patreons will be getting full recording of our post podcast <laughs> breakdown. Oh god! Right, should we crack on? So we got yeah, to try and get some on, followers. Bud. Crack on, bud. <laughs> crack on, mate. We're not going to need any of this shit when we've got a million followers on. on Develop a relationship with with other influencers. We don't oh, really do that. Maybe we do that. Fuck off with that shit. I hate when people go develop relationship. Well, what is that? It's shit. It's pointless. Fair just enough. Fucking just go, just go out and get a girlfriend. You sad virgins. Who <laughs> who's a sad virgin? Sorry, off of this. Whoever wrote this. All oh, right. Sorry, I didn't mean to say that. It was. Um, um, yeah, author is one Pamela Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> Think she's a sad virgin here? <laughs> <laughs> Pamela Anderson's writing this, is it? Is she? Yeah. She had a good career in Baywatch, and now she writes about how to influence social media. Where did you get this from, by the way? I don't even know. Uh, uh, love to know. <laughs> called love to know.com. So if you love to know, then Google it. What do they mean by that? Like, I mean... We're influencers. Everyone's an influencer. <laughs> Everyone's an influencer. We're a bad influencer. We just, yeah, we're a bad influence on society. Yeah. Another tactic is to contact major players in your area and exchange friendly messages with them. If you were able to strike up a relationship, the other person may be willing to promote you on his or her channel to help you out. Of course, you can always return the favour by promoting the person on yours. Well, that's true in terms of comedy. Like, I, I try and always support other comedians... And I think other comedians support each other on on social media. I think it's that's a nice community thing. Not me. But I think going into it, going, I need to, I, I need that. to target yeah. people who are bigger than me who will help me. It's gross, isn't it? Well, it's, I guess it's maybe it's playing the game, but I think doing it specifically through the prism of getting more followers. I feel like because it does turn a human relationship into a sort of commodified thing where you're trying to get a, it stops human beings. What's that? Who did what? Did can't say. Human beings should be a, a means, not an end. Mm. God, I tell you what, none of us are expecting us to bang out a bit of cant, will we? No, no. But um, I think that's what he says, something like that, the mad well, What do you mean by that? He meant that we should see human beings as people as opposed to, like, um, try and get something out of them. So, like, yeah. so like in, in capitalism, people can become an economic relation where they're only seen as what they can make, money you can make. But we should try and see them as human beings with... The plethora of emotions and complexities that make us up. It's difficult that. It's difficult that because obviously sometimes there are relationships that are just work relationships, and it, it, you know, especially in uh, you know the business that, that I, the business that I call show. Oh, what's that business then? Um, <laughs> I, I blocked us a video. Um, I think you know you have work relationships that become personal relationships. And then maybe it's you know it's hard it's hard to not make friends sometimes. Well, the issue is, Sean, is that you're arguing with Emmanuel Kant. You're not arguing with Johnny Pelham, and so you probably lose. God, it's no, so dark. It's I'm dark. So, I, but I'm not. I'm not arguing with him. I think he's. I think he's right. But the problem yeah. is, some. It, but he was like a moral philosopher. So they always exist in the land yeah, of life. He didn't have fucking Instagram either, did he? He had so few followers. How many? Do you think Emmanuel Kant's got like a, a Twitter page? Yeah, let's have a look. Emmanuel Kant. Emmanuel. Kant is what? C A N T. Imagine someone from South London calling someone the int word. And what's um, what's um, <laughs> Emmanuel Kant? <laughs> what's um Emmanuel? Is that one M? I I don't actually know how you spell his name. I am. I say say two M's. Well, yeah, I've done wrong. that. Emmanuel, I'm just gonna write Kant philosopher. By the way, do give us a five star review, listeners. <laughs> Maybe his first name isn't Emmanuel. It wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't surprise me at all. Uh, philosopher. The only thing that's coming up is a thing called Bitcoin philosophy. Do you think it's that? So are we bigger than Kant? 
I think we're bigger than can. Hey! That's impressive. Some of the, the top thing is someone's replying to someone, to Nancy Pelosi and Joe Biden saying, Canada sucks, man. I can't even tell the truth here. I mention stuff to them, but it's like I'm talking to a Western philosopher. Everyone's a critic. Who's this guy? He seems like he's a philosopher, actually. Maybe we can get him on the pod. His name's Jay Haney. Haney? Join yeah. our potty. Join our potty, Haney. 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 This is, this is descended, doesn't it? 15, 15 hours ago, he, he tweeted, here's a bunch of turtle art that might please you. I know I am. The problem is, <laughs> here's, here's the problem. He ticked my role on the pod <laughs> with that sort of sentence structure. <laughs> here's the problem. Here's the problem as well, is that um, he's probably not a real person. What do you so mean? All the, well, it's all—they're all bots on 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 social media. Do you think he's um, a Russian bot? I think he's just a bot. He might not be a Russian bot. What country do you think he's from as a bot? If you had to guess, where was he made? Mm, mm, <laughs> mm, probably uh, New Zealand. A New Zealand bot. He's a New Zealand bot. All right. That's well. the other thing with social media—they don't tell you. That no one talks about. They always go, yeah, you have to build up your followers, build up your followers. Do keep in mind that you're going to have to end up having a lot of arguments with, like, people that literally are not people. Mm. Like, I do that anyway. Calling, I'm always you're, you're screaming be, at my toaster. Yeah, you're going to be calling your... Calling a fan a dickhead. Yeah, I do um, that anyway. <laughs> you fucking wanker shelf. <laughs> holding my salt. You a fucking piece of shit. My hairdryer's a fucking snowflake cuck. Yeah. I'm sick of this shit. It's very complicated, I suppose. It's a complicated world. The world's complicated. We should just go back to feudalism where we had a king and we believed in God and we all died at 30. That's fucking so good if we could do that. I'd love that. I'd be I'd dead. Love I'd that. already be dead. No, well, I'd be the king. I'd be the king. You wouldn't be the king. There's no universe. There's no universe. The shard. I'd be a god. You wouldn't be a god. You'd be like, you're like a Greek god who's like really jealous and rageful and sort of pathetic. You'd be like that. Just... Be like, right, I'm going to flood the island because I don't like them anymore. <laughs> I'll tell you what I've done, Sean. I've Googled Immanuel Kant and I've got rid of the the article I was reading. What's what? I mean, so what's your favourite of the social medias, Johnny? I mean, how much time do you spend on any of them? I never go on any of them, really. I, I guess I, I'm on Twitter. I never use anything other than Twitter and I very rarely go on Twitter. I go on Twitter to merely find out if Arsenal are going to sign someone. And are they? And, we might sign Zinchenko at left back, which I think would be a very good signing. I think this. I think this podcast might be over. Um, but basically, well, do you think we've improved? Do you think we're going to be better? At, let's try and be better at social media this week. Yes, yes. Let's we do, do this. say this every week, and also I think we should have a chat about whether the pod still can exist, given how bad this episode's been. <laughs> I think it's been a good episode. I, I think it's been, it's been a sweet episode, hasn't it? Yeah. Um, I. The thing is, social media followers. It's important in many ways in the arts, in the media, in the culture. But you know what? The vast majority of people don't have social media, don't use it that much. Do you think that's true? What percentage of people do you think have social media? Because even my, like I tell my, like our regular users, I still think it's a big minority. Do you? Because my mum and my dad never use it, but my mum's on it, and like she's of a generation where that's quite new, and everyone mm. our age is on it. It must be relatively high, surely. But in t- I think people in our sort of sphere probably use it more often yeah. than other people. I think that's probably true because I wouldn't if I wasn't in because I've been. I feel guilty all the time that I'm not tweeting more. Not guilty, but like when I'm thinking about like I should be a better human being and improve my mm. career. Because, like you said, if you use it well, it can absolutely make you. It can sell out tours and things like that. Mm. But I just never use it well. God, I'm just not in. I might turn a light on. I mean, the podcast is about to end, Joey. <laughs> <laughs> Too bright, that, isn't it? Oh, no, that's all right. Why were you just sitting in the dark the whole episode? That's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, another unanswered question. <laughs> so, basically, follow us on social media. If you want to be a star, get some good content, be entertaining. Just, just follow. Be, what you have to do is be unique, yeah. always be funny, always be... Reaching out to people with bigger followers. Do you think followers. we're going to get a lot of people reaching out to us after this, being like, hey, just really love your podcast. I also do a little project. Do you want fancy hanging out? I don't think they're going to say that last bit, but maybe we'll get people with the other bit. Look, guys, you just got to follow us at Failing Pod. you just got to email us at failingbetterpod at gmail.com. 
You're part of a movement here. I don't see us as a podcast. I see us as a political and social movement. I think we are the. I think we're a new religion in the making. We're, we're the beginning of the end for the Western dominance of the world. <laughs> we represent failing and decline. I'm about oh. to take a picture of you, Johnny, that's going to go on our social media. Why? Right? Actually, I'm going to make myself look good. I'm very no, fat because, at the moment. No, because your picture... You've not been... You've been... <laughs> you've done the whole podcast like this, like on the side. <laughs> yeah, because we were meant to do that thing where I'm on one side and you're on the other side. Oh, yeah. But you fucked up. Ha <laughs> ha, one nil to John. I love it when I'm right, it happens so rarely. <laughs> right, I've got to go. Um, Bye, God listeners. bless China. What did you say? <laughs> God bless China. I'm born of two things, God bless the United States of America. I'm going, I think we should bless the Chinese for a bit. Yeah, they're, 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 they're due an upswing. Um, <laughs> God um, bless the Malaysian people. Yes, God bless China and the Malaysian people. And anyone, really. Even those who don't believe in God. Wow. Pretty profound, eh? Put that on your social media. Emmanuel Kant. Eat your heart out, you little bastard. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, brand new episode next Tuesday. Thank you so much for listening. Um... Um, and genuinely we're going to do a shout out to all our Patreon people within the Patreon episode which we're going to record now thank you so much for listening I think we should shout it out now shout it out um, alright uh, should we do it now alright if you want thank you so much to Dave Johns Shane Dave O'Connor jo- it says Dave Jones you fucking thick twat <laughs> you think Dave Johns the com- he's just obsessed with Newcastle based comedians <laughs> All right, Dave Johns. I'll take- <laughs> <laughs> Go on, do the next one. Do the ne- do do them fast, and I'll, and I'll correct them if they need to be corrected. <laughs> I don't know you've got to be having having Please, so. <laughs> please, Johnny. Please try and read these names. Dave Jones, Shane yeah. O'Connell, David yeah. Harris, yeah. Sarah Knock, yeah. Sam Collins, yeah. Tyler Howell, yeah. Chris Orm. Yep. Dean <laughs> Just Dean, I think his name is Dean. And Sean McLaughlin. Wee You're all Patreons and we love you. You're all wonderful patrons. You're help supporting us do this crazy thing called comedy. I'm off the screen. This is this has been okay. Yeah, it's been fine. Great. All Let's right. go into the Patreon episode. In the meantime, listeners, I'm Sean McLaughlin. I'm Johnny Pilum. And we truly are Failing Better. A podcast from producerpaul.co.uk. I mean, things definitely de- uh, <laughs> deteriorated. I think I've got heat stroke. I think I'm living on the heat.